Chapter 6, Autosuggestion in the Education of Children Paradoxical as it may appear to those who have not fully understood the principles and working of autosuggestion, the education of a child begins even before it is born. Without going back to explanations which I have given in previous chapters, I need only say that the imagination plays a supreme role in every function of life, and that by disciplining it, or in other words, by exercising autosuggestion, a prospective mother can not only determine the sex of her child, that has been demonstrated by certain medical authorities, but also to a large degree its physical and moral characteristics. She has only to let her imagination deposit in her subconscious mind the image of the son or daughter she desires, and the quality she wishes a still unborn infant to possess. The result is assured. Even more important, perhaps, is the fact that such a child will yield more readily than most to suggestion, which does not mean that its character is likely to be weak. On the contrary, the probabilities are that it will, as it grows up, exchange suggestion for autosuggestion and achieve perfect self-mastery. Only it must be remembered that our acts and deeds are, for the most part, the result of past outside suggestions or example. The importance of beginning a child's education early and of controlling the suggestions destined to influence and mold the young mind must therefore be obvious to all. Parents and educators must be careful to implant in it only good suggestions and protect it at all costs from bad ones. How is that done? I shall try to give a few indications or suggestions. They must be taken as general ones, of course. They may be modified or adapted to individual subjects and circumstances. How to treat children. Be of equal temper with them, speaking in tones gentle but firm, persuading them to obey without giving them temptation to resist your influence. Never be rough with a child, for to do so is to risk provoking a sentiment of fear accompanied by sullenness or even hate. Avoid taking ill of people in the presence of children. They will inevitably follow your example later on, and backbiting often leads to disaster. Seek to awaken in their minds a desire to understand nature. Keep them interested. Answer their questions clearly with good humor. Do not put them off, as so many of us are tempted to do with such replies as, Oh, you bother me. Oh, you know all about that later. Above all, never on any account tell a child that he or she is a storyteller or lazy or a dunce or worse. Remember that such suggestions have a very strong tendency to become realities, just as the better kinds of suggestions have. Encouragement particularly necessary to children. Rather say to a child inclined to be lazy or negligent, Well, you have done much better than usual today. I am very pleased with your work. You are improving. It may not be true no matter. The idea of improvement or excellence or endeavor will sink into the child's mind and gradually, with judicious encouragement, will be transformed unconsciously into fact. Avoid discussing diseases before children. Autosuggestion is quick to carry the idea to the physical plane and develop the very illness you wish to avert. Teach them, on the contrary, that good health is normal, sickness an anomaly, a humiliation, which is only a consequence of the non-observance of nature's law. Never frighten children. Do not let a child fear the elements. Man is made to stand cold, heat, rain, wind, etc., without ill effects. It is merely an idea that creates weakness. It is a cruel thing to frighten children by talking of boogeymen and goblins and the like. Fear thus instilled may persist in afterlife and ruin a child's later life and destiny. Make work attractive. It is easy to make a childlike work and study by making the lessons attractive by means of anecdotes appropriate to the subject, and by explaining the different points with a smile and conveying the impression that it is all quite simple. The educator's ideal should be to make his pupils look forward to the next lesson. Naturally, one must instill the love of labor with the idea that labor is natural and indispensable that idleness is abnormal, unhealthy, and conducive to every kind of physical and moral evil. A child's pliable mind easily assimilates such suggestion, which become permanent and would mold and build his character. Set only good examples. It is unnecessary, and not in the scope of this chapter, to enumerate all the qualities which a child should possess. What I wish to explain is the employment of suggestion and autosuggestion in his education and training. We all know that example is better than precept, but we realize the truth of it with greater force after studying the power of autosuggestion. And children are particularly sensitive to suggestion. They are always ready to copy what they see, good or bad. So the first duty of parents and educators is to set only good examples. Suggestion to children while falling asleep. 
Suggestion may be practiced with wonderful effect to correct any defect in a child's character and to develop missing qualities. Every night, just as the child is about to fall off to sleep or when it is already asleep, stand about a yard away from him and murmur in a low undertone what you wish to obtain, repeating 15 to 20 times the quality it is desired to provoke and the defects to be corrected. Do not be afraid to repeat the same phrases monotonously. That is the most powerful means of reaching the subconscious. The latter needs no eloquence to be impressed. A plain statement of the idea is sufficient. More than that defeats the end to be attained. Suggestion in schools. In schools, remarkable results should be obtained by teachers practicing suggestion on their classes every day before beginning lessons. The pupils should be told to shut their eyes, and then they might be addressed something after the following fashion. Children, I am sure you are all going to be good, polite, and amiable to everyone, and obedient to your parents and teachers. You will always take note of their observations, because you know that it is for your own good. You are intelligent, so you love your work, even the subjects which you use to dislike. In class, your attention will always be alert and attentive to what your teacher says. You will only be sorry for other children who may be foolishly wasting time and playing during their lessons. So as you are very intelligent, you will have no difficulty in understanding the lessons, no matter on what subject, and you will remember everything you are told. It will all be stored away in your mind, ready for you to use directly your knowledge is called upon. Character formed by imagination. Of course, the above is merely a sample of what may be said in the way of suggestion. It can be modified and certainly improved by teachers to suit their particular needs. The important point is to practice suggestion in this form. It does not matter if the children laugh a little at first, or if their attention wanders, or if, when the morning suggestion, it is not desirable naturally that they should know the purpose of it. Has become a regular thing. They listen automatically to the words without hearing them. The words reach the subconscious mind all the same, and the ideas conveyed do their work just as efficiently. In a word, it is essential that a child should be impregnated with the right kind of suggestion. Everything depends upon it. Play upon the imagination. Character is formed by imagination. More and often than not, that which is attributed to heredity, in the moral domains as well as in the physical, is the consequence of ideas germinated by example. It is impossible to believe a child is born a criminal. He becomes one by auto-suggestion. Just as he may become a valued member of the community as the result of auto-suggestion, guided in the right direction. End of chapter.